I don't remember the first day riding. I remember going to the BMX track uh, when I was four. I remember getting pushed up the jumps and I remember uh, we had one of those over under bridges in the first turn and when you went underneath the bridge, it was really dark. I remember I just loved to ride. My first bike race though, I was in second and uh, we came around the last turn. The kid in the lead crashed on the last jump like 15 feet before the finish line and I stopped to make sure he was okay and like help him up. And then the guys behind us all passed us and then he got up and went across the line and I ended up getting last. Maybe that's where it started. I was like, no, never again. Yeah, the Elsinore track, it was probably the first kind of proper shuttle track that I started doing runs at when I first started. Um, I had my first big crash there. <laughs> I remember that being kind of scary. And um, just the steepness of the mountain too, it was the first thing I ever rode that was kind of steep like that. And I did a lot of runs there. So um, yeah, I mean, geez. A lot of stuff has come and gone, but Elsinore laps have stayed the same every year for 12 years now. It's 10 minutes from my house now. I used to live an hour and a half from here and come out here to ride it, and now I'm just right down the street, so we ride it quite a bit. OG track, dude. This is, uh, oh man, I've probably done more laps here than just about anywhere. We filmed here, what was that, 10 years ago? I remember filming this exact turn, too. We're at Elsnor Downhill Trail. Once January hits, it seems like every year, it's kind of like the countdowns on. I really love the preseason, like January to March is maybe my favorite time of the year. You know it's coming and there's this buildup that just slowly starts happening. Beach. How many days until we leave for Portugal? Um, I think 18. eight. There you go. Well, until we leave, I don't know, but yeah, until the race, it's like 19, 18 or 19 days. Yeah. So yeah, we're coming up on it, man.
two more weekends or something like that, and then we peace out. So we are getting close. Three weeks from today will be practice day at the first World Cup. I feel good and healthy, and fitness is good, and so we're just at this point, like kind of refining. When we can get like everything's just consistent and solved, we're not playing with things. That's kind of my notion when I can tell like he's dialed in on things and can just be comfortable and just hop on the bike and go ride. Um, and that's when that guy's fast. Mm. That's when he does some, some pretty dirty things on the bike. <laughs> Dude, it was peeling off at the bottom of the run oh, to the plate, and I could hear it cracking off. And I'm like, oh, please stay on a little longer. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> Sick. it's funny riding out here now compared to like three months ago. Now I do feel full run in that little connector thing towards the bottom. I just paddle up it and like, I'm not hardly breathing by the bottom. I'm just like, <laughs> fitness is definitely like on point. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, no worries, dude. Have fun. What's your first memory of Aaron Gwynn? <laughs> Put him on the spot. <laughs> I think he was watching his chainless run. One of the greatest this sport has ever seen from the United States of America, Aaron Gwynn. I came out of the start gate, the champ snapped straight away. He broke his chain. I remember just thinking, you just gotta go as hard as you can go with what you got. And that was pretty much like an instant thought. We haven't seen him put a pedal in yet. But he's less than a second off. He's less than a second off. How's Aaron Gwynn doing it? Once I hit the first turn, it was like, all right, we're gonna go as fast as we can without the chain. I thought top 10, maybe, but not a win. <laughs> And Quinn pressing on regardless. This is one of the most exciting race runs I think I've ever seen in my life. Can he deny Conifer in his first World Cup win? Less than a second back at split number two. What's he done down through the trees? Ferrin was quick. Quinn now coming down towards the line. No. 334 is the time to beat. Oh, that is crazy. It's the win with no chain. Look at the time. Aaron Quinn does the impossible here. As soon as I crossed the line, just knowing how loud everybody was, I was like, dude, no way. I have never seen anything like that in all my years around Man by World Cup racing. Absolutely unbelievable. Wow. We saw that happen and we all freaked out. So yeah, that was probably one of the biggest moments. When I heard that the first World Cup was canceled, I was in the gym. We were four or five days from flying to Portugal and it was one of my last workouts and it was pretty weird. It was tough. I don't think I actually finished my workout. It sort of took the wind out of the sails a little bit. You have this motivation that's pushing and then all of a sudden it's just like kind of gone. A new wave of states issuing stay at home orders tonight, finally recognizing the restrictive measures could be our best chance against this pandemic. Residents now in 39 states in Washington, D.C. under orders to stay inside. There's always a goal to shoot for, I feel like, as far as a race. Even when you get hurt, you know, you've usually got somewhat of an, an idea of the timeline of when you're going to be back racing. and So you, you have something to aim for. I feel like right now we, we've kind of got like, it's like you got a target and you prepare and you, you line it up and it's like as soon as you get it in your sights, the target moves. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just a really weird time. It, it's felt pretty surreal, I think, for everyone the last month. Like, life has literally just kind of hit pause. Really, mountain bikes have given me the platform to grow, like, as a professional and just as a person. Like, when I started racing, I was 20 years old. You know, I was a kid. I hadn't done a whole lot besides a race up to that point. <laughs> so whether it was trying to cook or, you know, deal with sponsorship contracts or train or anything, I didn't know how to do anything, you know what I mean? And so I kind of learned a lot of just practical life skills and professional skills all through my racing. For me, that's the fun of, of life is, you know, learning and, and growing. I was uh, riding similar to playing the guitar. Or is there there is. <laughs> I don't know. One of them's pretty easy and comes natural, and the other one feels pretty impossible sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
they are similar and that the more you do it, the better you get. <laughs> Whether it's like sitting down with a guitar and learning how to play a basic chord and all of a sudden you make a sound that actually sounds good or it's business or whatever. Like I enjoy the process of learning and, and improving and I like those challenges. Where were you guys when Aaron found out the first race was gonna be canceled? We were at sushi with his dad. I called her when I left the gym and was like, hey. Oh, that's right. Sorry, Portugal's <laughs> She's been supposed to go to like the last five World Cups with me and I've either gotten hurt or now like races have gotten canceled. The first time we started talking longer it was about so Because I remember I was in the shared at the Milan airport mm -hmm. and I talked to you till like two o'clock in the morning and I had to wake up at 3.30 for a flight. That sucked. <laughs> Worth it. Well, that's love. <laughs>